Hello, my name is Todd Owens, and welcome to this edition of QLogic's Make IO Matter video series for HP. Today's topic will focus on demonstrating how to configure HP and QLogic network partitioning technology, known as NPAR, on HP ProLiant Gen 9 servers. So what is NPAR? NPAR, or NIC partitioning as you will hear it referred to as, means virtualizing a 10 gig Ethernet port uh, at the adapter level. NPAR allows a system administrator to virtualize a single port into four virtualized ports and then they're able to present those to the host operating system as regular network connections. NPAR technology is available on flexible network adapter offerings from HP and QLogic including the 530, the 533, the 534 Ethernet and Flex Fabric adapters, as well as the HP Store Fabric CN1100R Converge Network Adapter for Polyant servers. With NPAR, one adapter becomes eight. Administrators have the ability to fine-tune bandwidth on each of the virtualized ports, so there's full quality of service control. And the ability to utilize a single dual-port 10 gig adapter uh, to provide multiple network functions to the OS greatly simplifies server and storage network connectivity and administration, especially in virtualized server environments. So what's new with HP ProLiant Gen 9 server configuration? Well, with Gen 9, HP implemented UEFI, or Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, uh, as the configuration utility, eliminating the old BIOS-based utilities. UEFI provides capability for more intuitive and simplified pre-boot configuration and setup of server parameters for I.O. and many other devices. If you previously viewed our How to Configure NPAR Using CCM video, that was done on a Gen 8 server using CCM BIOS utility that's built into the adapter firmware. In this video, we're going to use a Gen 9 server, and while we still leverage the CCM utility in the adapter firmware, there's a significantly different look and feel for the system administrator compared to what you may have been using in a G5, G6, G7, or Gen 8 server. So let's get started. First, let's take a look at our existing server configuration. So I have a DL380 Gen 9 server running Windows Server 2012 R2. I'm going to open up Device Manager and see what kind of I.O. devices are currently installed in this server. So if I look at network adapters, what I see is an onboard 331i adapter, which is an onboard LOM for 1 gig and management port connectivity. And then in this particular server, we also have a uh, 533FLRT, which is the flexible LOM adapter uh, that's installed and this provides 10 gig connectivity using 10 G base T connections uh, to the uh, external network. What we're going to do is implement network partitioning or NPAR on the 533. And the idea is to virtualize each of those ports and move from a two port 10 gig connection to eight network connections from this single uh, network adapter. And so to do that, what we need to do is reboot the server. So once we get past the system early initialization screens, we get to this uh, boot screen where I want to use the F9 key to execute the system utilities uh, functions. Here we are in the system utilities screen, and you can see we have several different functions we can uh, execute. System configuration, one-time boot, embedded applications, etc. Uh, in order to configure the I.O. adapters, we simply ne need to enter into the system configuration menu. Uh, here you can see we have, again, several different things that we can configure uh, from this menu. Uh, this is where we can set our ILO configuration uh, and also all of our network connections and our smart array controllers uh, are visible here. In the case of NPAR or NIC partitioning, we want to set that on the 533 FLRT. So I'm going to go down here and select one of the ports for the 533 adapter. Now we can do this from either port, but I'll go ahead and select port 1. When I select port 1, I get a menu to 
uh, be able to update and monitor different configuration settings for these adapters. The firmware image menu allows me to upgrade the firmware for the adapter. The device hardware configuration allows me to set things like SRIOV settings or uh, if this were a true CNA, we could set storage personality here, wake on LAN, etc. In our case, we want to actually uh, set up the multifunction protocol. So I'm going to slide down here to multifunction mode, and you can see the SF represented here stands for single function mode. And what that means is this uh, adapter presents itself as a single function of NIC. If it's a NIC only adapter, if it's a flex fabric adapter or CNA, it'd be a single function of NIC and a single HBA function per port. Um, what I want to do is change from single function mode to NPAR 1.5. So I'll select single function mode here, and now I have a choice between single function and NPAR 1.5. So I'll select NPAR 1.5. And now you can see that my menu selections have changed. Here I now have a new uh, selection called NIC Partition Configuration Menu. If I select this, this is where I can actually um, look at each one of the physical functions that are being virtualized uh, for this adapter now that it's in NPAR mode. And I can also set my quality of service. To do the quality of service, I set that using the global bandwidth allocation menu. So by selecting that, here you can see that I can set my relative bandwidth weight and my maximum bandwidth. In this particular example here, I've got uh, for partition one, a relative bandwidth weight, or actually for partition one and two, I've got a relative bandwidth weight of 25%. Um, for partition three, it's 30, and for partition four, it's 20. The key to relative bandwidth weight is that you can either have all of these set to zero or the sum of the bandwidth weights have to equal 100. And essentially this gives you prioritization of the different partitions. And then the maximum bandwidth setting, you're allowed to set what the maximum bandwidth that that partition can actually access of the full 10 gigabit uh, connection. In our case here, we've got three of those ports set to 100%, so they can access maximum available, and uh, we've got one set to 50%. So I'll exit out of that. So that's uh, how we set our uh, quality of service. And from there, we can exit, uh, hit the escape key to exit out of our uh, NPAR configuration menu. At this time, it's going to ask us to uh, save and exit. So I'll hit the Y to do that and we get back to our uh, system configuration menu. Uh, let's go back to the home screen. And from here, in order for these settings that we've just changed to take effect, I need to reboot the system. So I'll select reboot and reboot the system. Now we're back on our server. Let's go ahead and get into device manager and take a look at our network connections for that 533 FLRT 10 gig adapter. And here you'll now notice that we've got uh, eight connections, eight connections for our network uh, for the 533 FLRT. So these are each of those physical functions that were virtualized from the two different ports. So this is how we implement NPAR in a Windows environment. So in summary, NPAR allows for adapter-based virtualization uh, of both Ethernet and converged network or flex fabric adapters in HP ProLiant DL, ML, and SL servers. HP NPAR supports a single HBA function per port when using either the flex fabric or the converged network adapters. And those HBA functions can either be iSCSI or FCOE. NPAR is supported in HP's 500 series uh, adapters, the 530, SFP+, plus the 530T, the 530FLR, the 533FLRT, and the 534FLR SFP plus adapters uh, for HP ProLiance and the HP Store Fabric CN1100R adapters. And finally, the MPAR configuration uh, is enabled via the system configuration menus accessed from the system utilities using the F9 function key uh, on HP ProLiant Gen 9 servers at the boot of the boot time for the server.
For more information, you can access our HP microsite at www.qlogic.com slash go slash HP. Here you'll find lots of information on the NPAR technology we talked about today, plus uh, information on all of our other offerings for HP. This includes white papers, data sheets, technology briefs, sales tools, and more. If you're interested in HP-specific training from QLogic on the I.O. technology that we provide to HP, well, check out our HP's training site at hp.qlogictraining.net. Here you'll find a variety of short, on-demand training courses, and you'll have the opportunity to gain certifications on HP and QLogic adapter technology. If you're a first-time user of this training site, be sure to use the access code shown here to view the HP-specific material. Well, that's it for this session of Making I.O. Matter for HP. I want to thank you for your time and attention, and if you have any questions, you can reach our team using the contact link on the HP QLogic website or send us an email at hpsolutions at qlogic.com. Until next time, keep helping us make I.O. Matter and have a wonderful rest of your day.